idea that, uh, that uh, Alberta might uh, not just uh, make uh, their own pensioners poorer by pulling out, but uh, impact Canadians from coast to coast is, uh, coast to coast to coast is not something that um, most Albertans would want, let alone most Canadians. The Prime Minister there reacting to Alberta's pension plan exit bid. He's not the only one raising concerns. So too is the opposition leader, Pierre Poiliev, multiple premiers and economists. But Alberta's finance minister, Nate Horner, maintains it would be beneficial for the province. I spoke to him about that on Friday. Minister Horner, nice to, nice to have you to make the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Let, let's just start by, you know, the basic case that you're making to Albertans about why you want them to consider this idea of getting out of the Canadian pension program and, and plan and creating your own. Well, I think you have to go back to how it started, uh, Rosemary. This was a, a recommendation that came to us from the Fair Deal panel uh, after they traveled the province, um, you know, thinking and, and looking for for ways that Alberta could seek a, a, a more fair deal in confederation. And this was something they asked us to pursue. Uh, so then we commissioned the report and it, it did take quite a while to uh, update, update the data. And then as you saw in my mandate letter from Premier Smith, it basically um, asked me to release the report and engage with Albertans in a conversation about it. Is this something that you want us to proceed with? And if so, what, what would you like it to look like? What's important to you? So I, I wonder then how you uh, continue to make that pitch to them when you have a lot of people now speaking out against the idea. The prime minister saying that it would cause undeniable harm. Ontario's finance minister this week saying, yeah, it's going to cause harm to working people and retirees in Ontario and Canada. The conservative leader, Pierre Poiliev, uh, saying no, Alberta should stay in it. These are just and there are other people saying things, too, as you well know. Do you still think that this is worth pursuing and, and trying to put on the table, given the outcry you've heard over the past couple of weeks? Well, I, I welcome all of those all of those conversations. Like I, I'm looking forward to an FPT meeting with uh, Peter Bethlehem Falvey. Uh, and the rest of the provincial ministers um, and have that conversation. Um, you know, I've, I've tried my best to be as, as professional as possible. I, I tried to phone everybody the night before we released the report, talked about what the report said, what the report would mean uh, for CPP if an Alberta pension plan uh, was pursued with the data in the LifeWorks report. Um, and it doesn't leave CPP, you know, insolvent or inoperable. It means that the costs will have to go up some somewhat um so I, I think that's that's important um but i think uh you know my my main task is having this conversation with albertans you know sure. the cpp act is clear from inception uh every province uh has the right uh to uh unwind themselves and untangle themselves from the cpp um that was there in 1966 so I think it's it's Albertans right to have the conversation, but I certainly welcome the broader conversation with, uh, you know, other other Canadian leaders. I look forward to it. Uh, you have, the, I guess, the, the report that uh, Jim Dinning did for you did give you an estimate of, of what uh, Alberta believes would be its share. And it uh, it has said it's be it would be three hundred and thirty four billion dollars, if I'm not mistaken, would if that turns out not to be the number, if that's where you end up with a fight on your hands, it, down the road, of course, do you th still think that an Alberta pension plan makes sense if that is if it is not as big a piece of the pie as, as you have estimated there? Well, I just want to be clear, this isn't our report and, and we didn't estimate it. You know, there's, you know, quite a range. It estimates from, yep. from 260 billion to 360 billion. Uh, but what I would say is what I've said to Minister Freeland, uh, what the Premier said, if this is wrong, tell us, you know, the, the CPP Act is, is federal legislation. If, if this interpretation analysis is wrong, then tell us what the number is. As far as the question of whether it would still be worth it, that would still be a conversation, you know, with Albertans. Uh, but we would welcome, you know, we would welcome their, their input and, you know, instead of just high level statements that, uh, you know, have, have no substance behind them. It, it, it might scare Canadians, though. I, I, and, you know, I think that that is part of the argument that um, the Ontario finance minister and the prime minister are making um, the concerns that, that it could 
create instability for the rest of the country. I, I, I get that your job is to help Albertans, but what would you say to that, to Canadians that are, are worried about the prospect of this? Well, I'd say that the Prime Minister has many tools at his disposal. The, the retail carbon tax is costing every family $710 a year, as opposed to what this would mean, a $175 a year increase. There's tools at his, afford, afford, at his disposal if he cares about affordability. Um, I would also say that there's other programs. Alberta is a net contributor to Confederation to the tune of $20 billion annually. That's what the equalization program is. Mm -hmm. So I might ask, you know, what, what is fair, what is fair, you know, through the other lens, you know, does, does a population of four and a half million have to prop up every program in the country? I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. Well, that, that is sort of the way Confederation works, though, right? Like, I mean, th then we start into a conversation about whether Alberta wants to be part of the country, I suppose. Oh, I, I certainly think we do. You yeah. know, I'm a proud Alberta, a proud Canadian, and, and we're more than happy to pay our fair share, which we, we know will be more than elsewhere. Mm. Uh, but we also would like to continue to be the economic engine of the country and not have, you know... Federal uh, federal intentions around stopping that. So sure. we're that's how the fair deal panel started, and that's what led us here. Yeah, you brought up the carbon tax, and I just want to ask you about the announcement that happened on Thursday from the prime minister: a decision to pause the carbon tax on home heating oil and to increase the rebate, a, a measure that primarily affects um, Atlantic Canada but could have an impact in the rest of the country. What did you make of that decision, minister? Well, I think it's interesting. They've been telling us for years that it doesn't impact affordability, so I guess they finally believe that it does. Um, no, I think it's ridiculous, frankly, Rosemary. You know, I'm I'm here. It's I think it's minus 15 today. It was minus 23 yesterday. Um, our provinces run predominantly on natural gas, which burns 30 percent cleaner than heating oil. Um, what is the point? You know, like. It's it's time it's time that the the our federal leadership uh, admits that uh, the retail carbon tax is an abysmal failure. They haven't been able to show the emissions that they've abated through the program. All it does is cost us more. And I would just ask, you know, they know the regional disparity around heating oil. You know, I I don't know if they're just, you know, making making changes as they campaign in the Atlantic, but. Uh, I'm very, very happy for for my Atlantic cousins, but, uh, you know, I, I certainly think it's unfair. Okay, Minister Horner, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.